Top 10 Best Things to Do in Paris Even if you've never been to Paris you may feel like you already know the city of light. Let's have a look at the best things to do in Paris. 1. The Louvre The world's largest and most visited art museum has more than enough material for an article of its own. The Louvre Palace started out as a medieval fortress, before becoming a gallery for artists to study antiquities and the works of old masters in the 1700s. Fast forward 230 years and you have a museum that you'd need weeks to fully appreciate. There are antiquities from scores of world cultures and a collection of Renaissance and Baroque art that puts every other museum in the world to shame. And of course the Mona Lisa, Leonardo da Vinci. 2. Musée d'Orsay. In the astonishing confines of a Bozar railway station is a compendium of French art and culture from the mid-19th century to 1914. The Gare d'Orsay is on the left bank of the Seine and was completed in 1900 for the Exposition Universelle. After becoming obsolete for modern rail travel the building sat idle before being listed and turned into one of the largest art museums in the world, filling the gap between the Louvre and the National Museum of Modern Art at the Pompidou Centre. In this unforgettable environment are scores of iconic works of art by Impressionists and Post-Impressionists Van Gogh, Starry Night Over the Rhone, and Manet, the Déjeuner sur le Herbe. 3. Eiffel Tower even taking on board the queues and safety measures, how could you possibly come to Paris and not go up one of the world's most famous landmarks? Built in time for the 1889 World's Fair, the tower stands at 324 meters and was the tallest structure in the country until the Milau Viaduct was completed in 2004. As an attraction it hardly needs introduction. Close to 7 million people ascend the Eiffel Tower every year, most go up to the first two levels where there are shops and restaurants. While the third level is still the highest accessible observation deck in Europe at 276 meters. 4. Notre Dame de Paris. Hands down the most famous and beloved Gothic monument in the world, the Notre Dame's unmistakable towers rise from the eastern point of the Ile de la Cité and the Seine. In Paris's medieval core, the cathedral was begun in 1163 and completed just under 200 years later. After picking up damage in the revolution this monument was revitalized in the 19th century by the master restorer Violet Le Duc. There are many reasons to brave the crowds and see the Notre Dame, from the peerless sculpture on the facades, including the famous gargoyles, to the rose windows, stained glass, bell, enshrined in literature by Victor Hugo, and the view that can be had from its towers. Despite the revolution the treasury still has relics like the crown of thorns, while you can peer into Paris's distant past in the excavations at the archaeological crypt. 5. Palace of Versailles The largest and maybe the most famous palace in the world isn't something to take lightly. A testament to the opulence and excess of the ancient regime, Versailles grew from a hunting lodge in the 17th century to the ultimate statement of power in the century that followed. André Le Notre, who perfected the French formal garden style, and the virtuoso artist and decorator Charles Le Brun are just two of the masters to leave their mark at Versailles. You need a lot of time to get the most from the palace, its opulent apartments and the historic hall of mirrors that links them. And the main palace is only one element, along with the bewilderingly large grounds, the Royal Opera House, Grand Canal, Neptune Basin, Grand, and Petit Trianon, and not to forget Marie Antoinette's own idyllic village, the Amo de la Reine. 6. Hôtel des Invalides. Louis XIV founded the sumptuous Hôtel des Invalides in 1670 to house destitute and infirmed war veterans. The building still fills that purpose, as a retirement home for servicemen and women, equipped with medical facilities. For the military-minded or people enthused by French history there are also museums with martial themes inside. The Musée de l'Armée is France's national military museum and has medieval armor, cannons, uniforms, military figurines, artillery, a Renault FT-17 tank and a V-2 missile. The Dome des Invalides is what many come for, a former church and burial place for military heroes. 7. Musée de la Rangerie 
built by Napoleon III, the Grand Orangery of the Tuileries Palaces is a sensational museum for Impressionist and modern art. The building had been put to a variety of uses before Monet donated his nom fayard, water lilies, panels to the French government. These were a monument to the end of the First World War and are displayed in the Orangery's fabled oval rooms. More than 90 years later this cycle of eight paintings on the ground floor remains as subtly powerful as ever. In the basement you'll be treated to pieces by some of the most illustrious names in the history of art, like Paul Cézanne, Matisse, Renoir, Rousseau, Sisley, Picasso, and Haim Soutine. 8. Centre Georges Pompidou now more than 40 years after it sprouted in the 4th arrondissement's Beauburg area, the postmodern Pompidou Center and its inside-out design can still provoke a reaction. Within, there's an enormous library and alongside it is the IRCAM, Avant-Garde Music Institute. But the main event is of course the Musée National d'Art Moderne, Europe's largest modern art museum and one of the 10 most visited art museums in the world. The collections take in every notable movement in modern and contemporary from 1905 to today. Think Matisse, Picasso, Kandinsky, Braque, Calder, and Clay, but also giants from the last 60 years like Yves Klein, Warhol, Lichtenstein, Nam June Paik, and Joseph Boyce. There are also major temporary exhibitions on the panoramic top floor, Jeff Koons, Henri Cartier-Bresson and Dali have all featured in the last five years alone. 9. Arc de Triomphe On Place de l'Etoile at the western end of the Champs-Élysées is the monumental Astyla arch erected to celebrate the victories and remember the war dead of the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars. The Arc de Triomphe is also at the center point of the Axe Historique, a long, straight line linking monuments from La Défense in the west to the Louvre in the east. And as for the arch its facades are carved with reliefs of key episodes from the 1790s and 1800s, like the Battle of Austerlitz and Fall of Alexandria. On the pillars are sculptural groups, including the iconic Marseillaise, which has a winged personification of liberty leading the volunteers, to symbolize the revolution's the 10th of August uprising. And finally, the names of the military leaders of the day are etched in the pillars, and those who died in battle are underlined. 15. Sacré-Cœur At the highest point of the Butte Montmartre Hill is a monument born out of a catastrophe. Designed as a Romano-Byzantine basilica, the Sacré-Cœur is known the world over and was started in 1875 as penance for France's defeat in the Franco-Prussian War. The ghostly white stone is travertine quarried south of Paris at Chateau Landon. You have to battle up square Louise Michel below to be rewarded by what might be the best view of Paris. Head inside to see the apse, which has one of the world's largest mosaics in its ceiling, named Christ in Majesty. For an even more complete view of the city you can scale the church's iconic dome. Thank you for watching.